Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor over at Bloomer Boomer, and I interview guests who have done interesting and cool and sometimes wild and crazy things. And that's who I'm talking to today, uh, Kathleen Turner Davis. And no introduction could adequately do her justice. She's lived a full and eventful life. But I will tell you, her new memoir, Kiss Me Swami, The Spiritual Education of a Beauty Keep Queen, will keep you out of your seats. <laughs> uh, Kathleen, thanks for being here today. I'm very, very excited. Well, thank you for having me. Now, uh, let me ask you, uh, were you a, a wild and crazy girl back in the day? <laughs> Um, that depends on, on what perspective you have. <laughs> I think there were times when I got a little crazy and wild, and there were times when I actually pulled back. Okay, so, so yeah. what were you like in high school? I wasn't popular. Um, I had, you know, a few of my friends, and, and I mainly, you know, wasn't, I wasn't very social. I didn't even date in high school. I was very hung up in con competitions, and every weekend, if we weren't competing, we were practicing, and in the weeknights, we practiced. So I was a pretty straight teenager back then, and I didn't, um, I, I, I think I went to two parties during my whole high school years. Okay, do you feel like uh, the same girl today that you were back then? Oh, no. <laughs> Nowhere near, right? Okay. Well, I mean, do you surprise yourself, like, um, how you were then versus how you are today? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Um, but, you know, if you read the book, you'll see that I, I did a lot of work on myself. I did a lot of letting go, a lot of things, and I am a different person today. I mean, it, in, and I, and, when I say this, I mean in some of the in some good ways. Um, there, you know, there are some things that, that never change. I mean, I've always um, had a certain way about me, and I do pull back a lot. I need a lot of space. I need time to be alone, get myself together. We, as baby boomers, were. Uh, considered uh, breaking the norms, uh, you know, we were protesting and, and uh, doing drugs and, and all kinds of stuff, at least that allegedly, right? So what was it back then, you think, that uh, got us to be uh, that way? Well, first of all, I wasn't really that way, and I talk about this, that the, the I saw a play about a year ago, and it was an amazing play. It was called The Dodgers. And it was about um, back in the 60s when people would dodge the draft. The brilliant play. And there was a there was a character in the play where she was exactly as you described. She was so free and she did drugs and set and she, you know, she had a lot of sex, but but it was purely out of loving people. And that Play really stirred me up, and I, I, you know, wanted to be that girl back then. I wanted to be freer, but I was very tightly wound when I went to Hollywood. You're now living a life in LA with a, a master's in social work from Columbia. And how much of your coming of age years in the '60s and '70s is with you today? And and are you a changed person or the same person uh, grabbing at the brass ring of life? <laughs> well, I'm still grabbing at that brass ring, but I, I am the same person in many ways, but I'm different. I had a whole lifetime in coming here at 20 and coming back here in my 60s. It's, you know, you're, you know, I've had children. I have grandchildren. I became educated. I've traveled. And, you know, the, the wealth of experiences that I've had in between. So I'm not the girl that got on the airplane at 20 and got on the airplane, I think it was 67 when I came back here. A whole lifetime was in between. So I think that I've probably grown a little bit since that, and my choices would be different probably today than some of them back then. Yeah. Well, tell us, what uh, what motivated you to write the memoir? Um, because it is fascinating, and uh, for someone who to shares some of the experiences that you talk about. I think it's great to bring this out and, and, and re remind all of us about what we were doing and how life evolved. So uh, what's kind of the backstory behind the book? It wasn't 
until I um, was getting divorced from my husband. And I realized that I needed to talk to someone professionally to sort some things out. And it was then when I was, was actually in therapy for a minute, which is in the book too, that um, the therapist said to me, you've got to write a book. You've got to write these things down. And I wanted the book to be entertaining and, and, and you know, for people to have a good read. But um, I also wanted the book to be something that can help people as well. So the challenge was integrating the fun stories and all the adventures with kind of an undercurrent of spiritual growth and giving people the tools that I believed helped me along the way so that people could realize that they can clean up the past, that they can let go of resentments and beliefs that can hold them back regardless of your age. Uh, what did you discover when you got to Los Angeles and, and how did the Hollywood establishment treat young women in those days? Was there rampant sexual harassment? Was the was the free love movement a good thing in your opinion? Well, the free love movement was was in full sprint and it, it, was, it was there. That's what it was. It was alive and, and beginning. So it was a beginning of a new era. And but in Hollywood, there was always, I believe, there was always that, um, the sexual thing going on. And I didn't experience it very much. Um, I really think that the beauty pageant thing um, kept that away from me a lot. And then when I came, I got a movie right away and things started happening very quickly. I was very lucky, but a lot of my friends had a lot of uh, sexual harassment, yeah. a lot of it. It, it, must have um, take, it must have taken you a lot of uh, courage to write this book because, uh, you know, a lot of the, your past was your past and you did maybe proud of many and, and not so proud of other things. And so it all comes out in this one memoir. That must have, that must have taken courage. Well. You know, it, it was difficult. It was difficult because you're telling the secrets that you thought you died with, actually. Right. And it, it, it was very difficult. But, you know, it was, and going back to that question again, it was during the sexual revolution. And, um, you know, we were taught to, the generation before that was taught to keep basically your legs together. And this one was you were made wrong if you didn't pull them apart. So it was one end of a spectrum and it was difficult to, you know, digest all of that. I, I was this teenage virgin. I had no experience with men when I came here. So it was like a um, accelerated course. Wow. And your, you know, <laughs> is it, your story is of a, you know, a middle class girl from Maryland who wins the title of Miss Washington, D.C., moves to Hollywood. Then, then you even Tell us about losing your virginity to uh, Troy Donahue, you kiss Elvis, <laughs> date Frank Sinatra. I mean, what a life. It's ex so exciting. You know, when I look back on it, it seems surreal and it, it was exciting. But in the moment, you're kind of just living the life that you're given. And uh, Elvis, of course, was, you know, as, as a child, I had his pictures all over my wall and played his records constantly. So that was thrilling. The, I think the, the person that intimidated me the most was Sinatra. He had a magnetism about him that I've never seen before or after. Yeah, that's really true. And it came across in his stage performance as well. Yeah, he was quite, and he was a gentleman to me. He was lovely to me. Well, it was another era, in a sense, that uh, that they all came from. And, uh, you know, we all have dreams as a child of, of what our lives will be like as adults. Uh, what uh, what has your journey taught you about the possibilities and the challenges of, of fulfilling those dreams? Well, I think we all have challenges in life. And the challenges I've learned are an opportunity for growth. And I think that's really why we're here. We're here to grow. And we're here to connect with that you know, Swami inside of us, that presence inside of us. And if we don't have challenges, we have no opportunity to do that. 
And yet, you know, I also see that life has so many possibilities and to never give up and that just showing up and putting yourself out there, miracles can happen, amazing things can happen. As for me, all I had to do was show up and most of this stuff happened. None of this, these things were really planned. Now, uh, uh, you know, let me ask you something. Uh, do you think boomers are still uh, living that sort of a life or have they uh, uh, maybe moved back into the shadows? No, I think they are. I think boomers are amazing <laughs> from this generation and the, the people that I, I meet, the men and the women, they're still out there doing their thing. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Uh, now, you're now living uh, the best life as a single woman. What's it like dating in your 60s and 70s? And do you expect uh, more from men today than you did maybe decades ago? And, and uh, how do you uh, handle yourself to any different way? Well, there's a big difference between being 20 and being 70. So that in itself is different. I think the main thing is that we all have, you know, come with baggage when we hit 70 and, and even 60. And we all had baggage, you know, from the very beginning, but more baggage. And baggage can be good baggage. Uh, we bring uh, sometimes children, grandchildren, we bring our experience in the workplace. So it's really different from being young when you're starting out in life and you have goals and you have dreams and you want to build something for someone. Most of our life is behind us now. And so we're, it's, it's a different, it's a whole different mindset. Saying that it can be better because I find that now you live more in the moment because you know that you're very lucky to still be here and especially to have your health if you have it. And so you take advantage of every moment much more than when you're in your 20s and 30s. Yeah, for me, that's true. I was thinking of what I was going to do next and I was always kind of wanting these goals. And now I just love um, every day when I wake up, I feel so lucky to wake up and to be able to be healthy and to be able to have this really nice life right now. Well, this, this is the book and, you know, I, uh, uh, you kind of told and explained the message there. I mean, you've done it in a way where uh, there's an excitement to it, just living through you, your life experience. And then uh, there's a, a message that runs through that. And uh, just uh, tell us what, what your goal is or the message that you hope others will uh, get from the memoir. Well, the message is basically that you can let go of anything at any time and that you are still here and that you can really focus your mind on what you want, not on what you don't want. And that while you're alive, you're living and you can always live the best life at any time, at any age, at any moment. As I say goodbye, any final, uh, final message? Well, the final message is that I hope you enjoy Kiss Me Swami. I hope you receive insights and you receive some tools and techniques to help you move your life in the direction that you want to move it in. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, thanks so much, Kathleen. Thank you very much. Kiss Me Swami, the spiritual education of a beauty queen. It's at bloomerboomer.com right now. I want you to take care and we will see you next time.